la vidéo. So let's start. Um, there are a few things that we have to discuss today. I think the first one um, is regarding the Azure sponsoring. Um, as you know, the uh, sponsoring ended in uh, November, and so now we have to pay the first bill. The billing period is not over yet. Um, so no, sorry, it ended last Friday. So I don't have the um, all detail. Um, so the only thing that I know right now is the amount of money that we will have to pay. Um, we, I still have to clarify who will have to pay for that. Normally it should be KOZUK, but uh, it did not receive any information yet. So it is something that you have to, to figure out. Um, so there are some ongoing discussion about should we stick to Azure? Should we migrate to Google Cloud? Um, because we have some opportunities to sponsor that um, from Google. Um, and so on, and what will be the, the current, so the, the midterm, the long term vision for the Jenkins Etra project. So that's all the discussion happening at the moment, but obviously I don't have more information to share. Do you have any question, concern that you want to raise about this topic? So just to give you, just to give you a quick overview. Uh, right now, it cost us, it cost us around 20k uh, per month, so $20,000 per month for to run the infrastructure. There are multiple places where we need to improve um, to give you, uh, yeah, there are multiple services that are not optimized at all. Like, for example, the rating, I discovered last week that the rating application costs uh, almost $500 um, dollar per month because uh, of the wrong uh, settings uh, in place. So there are definitely some optimization that we have to do um, with the test of our infrastructure. So that's regarding the iOS account. Regarding the mirrors, <coughs> the multiple issues we have we had over the, the Christmas period. Um, as you know, mirrors is getting quite outdated now. And the last time we upgraded the Ubuntu operating system to the latest stable version, we also upgraded multiple services like the PostgreSQL database used for uh, Mirror Brain. And so, um, because that machine is running a lot of different services, uh, Mirrors, package.jenkins.io, archive.jenkins.io, um, it's also the place where we, we generate the artifacts for the um, um, RPM repositories, data repositories. That machine is uh, has a lot of configuration, has a lot of specific Python Ruby environment configuring it, and so we will have to take some time to to refactor that machine in order to split the different services in different locations. So, um, so we can reduce the load on that machine. And what specifically happened to the that machine during the Christmas period is that we have three different PostgreSQL databases running at the same time: PostgreSQL 9.3, 9.3. 7 and 11, I think, something like that. And the Apache is using the 9.3, but we have some um, conflicts with the other two other databases that were running some loads on the machine. So I had to turn off uh, the two other PostgreSQL database. Um, so now everything seems to be working fine, but yeah, this, we still have regular issues on your brains um, when we have some load on it. Uh, another issue that happened that affected a user during the period is that while migrating uh, Jenkins.io on a new Kubernetes cluster, we accidentally uh, enabled the STS settings, which basically uh, sw automatically switched uh, from HTTP to HTTPS Jenkins.io and all subdomains. Uh, and so because Mirrors.Jenkins.io does not support um, HTTPS, a lot of people complained about that specific issues. And the only way to get rid of that issue, so obviously we, we disabled that flag on Jenkins.io, but every uh, every people who went on Jenkins.io, why that flag, that why that flag was set to uh, on, have to to reset the settings in their own browser. So it's an issue that affects. I mean, all the people who were, went uh, on Jenkins.io uh, during one day, I think, and so that's so something that. Yeah. Olivier, when you say Jenkins.io in that case, it's not 
I didn't seem to be affected by the things that are already HTTPS, like wiki.jenkins.io or ci.jenkins.io, but mirrors.jenkins.io did seem to affect me. What are the other things that were affected? Mirrors I was aware of. So there is mirrors.jenkins.io, and um, there are another website that does not support HTTPS, but I don't remember it by heart. But uh, most of the people were affected by mirrors.jenkins.io. Okay. Thanks. So I did a, I, I, on a personal tack, I attempted to use, to go through a CDF security assessment thing for one of the plugins I maintain. And one of the questions they ask is about transmitting checksums over non-secured channels. And because updates.jenkins.io is not over HTTPS now, I think that one is a no still. So eventually, I assume we will want to go to HTTPS for for mirrors and for other for all of our properties, or so, is that um, no, not really? So yes and no. So the, the challenge that you have right now is Mural Brain, the tool that we use for our mirrors, does not support HTTPS correctly, and that tool does not seem to be maintained anymore. So before, just before the, the Christmas period, uh, I gave a look to Mirror Bits, which is a different uh, Mirror tool. I can share the link. And so ideally, I would like to take some time to, to see if we can use it to replace Mirror Brain. And in that case, we would be able to use HTTPS for the mirrors. Thank you. So, Thanks for the clarity. So the tool that I was, that I'm mentioning is, um, I'm sure it's an RC. It's this one. So if you want to uh, to spend more time on it or have a look into it. Um, so there is already deployed it on the Kubernetes cluster, but I still have to configure it and to see if I can have an M chart that can be used to deploy it. So if it's if it's working correctly, then I would like to remove and get rid of your brain. So maybe it will be a solution. But right now, mirrors.jenkins.io uh, does not support um, HTTPS. That's okay. Thanks for the clarity. Um, another point, another major initiative that you have to work on, um, and on that, uh, Tim Jacob already helped a lot, which is migrating um, the Kubernetes cluster, the old Kubernetes cluster running on ACS to AKS, um, because the ACS service is deprecated and will be turned off by the end of January. Um, we already moved, so Team Jacob already moved multiple services. So plugins are Jenkins.io is now running on the right cluster, Javadoc as well, Jenkins.io as well, reports the Jenkins.io. Um, the chatbot is already running on the new Kubernetes cluster. So what remains, so there is an ongoing work to migrate accounts the Jenkins.io. And so there are three services that are still running on the old Kubernetes cluster, which is uplink.jenkins.io, ldap.jenkins.io, and evergreen.jenkins.io. Um, I'm planning to work on uplink and ldap uh, this week or maybe next week. Um, regarding evergreen, uh, I have the feeling that um, we already started the discussion to say, to, uh, to ask if you still want to maintain it or not. Nobody really complained or mentioned whatever. So I'm assuming that we will just let Evergreen die on the old Kubernetes cluster. Uh, well, it's not only die because if we disable Evergreen parts on Asia, we also need to shut down uh, parts in AWS because from what I've seen in the cost spreadsheet, uh, a significant part of AWS cost also should be coming from Evergreen. And the, uh, yeah, so the current situation day that uh, next week on uh, January 15th, we have a governance meeting. Future of Evergreen um, is uh, in the agenda. And if nobody steps up as a maintainer, whether it's a company entity or individual contributors, then yeah, I believe that uh, the best resolution for us is to just shut down Evergreen. Okay. We can uh, always recover it if needed. Yes. So it's okay if, if Olivier already preps for a decision from the governance board, the decision will be 15 January. At that point, he could then turn off the evergreen, evergreen services? I think we will need a blog post and final message because uh, last time I, I heard that there are several active users of Jenkins Evergreen. I tried to confirm it uh, with Batiste, but I don't have uh, actual information so far. I would prefer to go through um, 
at least some kind of advance announcements, even if it's okay. two weeks, it's better than nothing. Okay, so it's if if we decide December fifteen or January fifteen, um, by end of January, there's there's a potential that the evergreen infrastructure can be shut down as one way of reducing costs and reducing admin uh, admin efforts on services. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's pretty. That's all for the ACS cluster. And another topic is that I now have access. I have admin. I have, no, I have more access on the Azure accounts, and so I can now invite people on the Azure accounts. So the idea would be to delegate access to specific services. Um, so the first thing is because right now we are only the default Active Directory um, on the Azure account, we cannot have fine. Um, uh, permission like uh, one person have access to that specific service. So you have access to everything or you don't have access to everything right now in the Azure accounts. So the first question is, do we want to pay to have uh, more control of, uh, of the users, like defining like, let's say uh, someone only have access to the Kubernetes cluster, or do assume that if you have access to the Azure account, you have access to everything. So that's the first question, because if we put in place some rules like that, um, we have to maintain to define and so on. And the other thing is, um, I think it would be interesting to discuss how we decide who has access to the Azure accounts. Because right now, it's, it's only Tyler and me, which means that um, if for some reason, neither Tyler or me are available, nobody can really debug or fix anything on the infrastructure. So I was wondering, what would be the rules to invite people on the Jenkins infra? Mm -hmm. uh, so the most straightforward way is just say that uh, official roles, let's say board member uh, send officers are eligible to get access. Well, they have CLI signed, so why not? It uh, immediately increases uh, the number of uh, people who can access it uh, to 10 people or even more. So it's definitely a good first step. I like that. I think that's simple. That would give Alex and you, Oleg, access as board members, uh, as your idea, even officers. So that would give me access as well. Yeah. So. Uh, also, Daniel Beck, uh, uh, which is also critical because our security system is also dependent on Asia. Right. So, mm -hmm. Olivier, would that be acceptable to you to declare that officers and board members are granted? I'm fine with that. Um, the only thing that I would like to say is to specify if, if that person does not think that he needs an access, then he does not need to have access. So for example, I'm, I'm thinking to Ulrich, um, if the Ulrich does not need access to the Jenkins Infra account on Azure, mm -hmm. maybe he does not, I mean, I'd, the idea is not to have too, too many people on the account. Well, so in terms of controlling that, I'd propose that Alyssa Tong, Uli Hoffner, and Mark Wait don't be don't shouldn't be granted initial azure access right let's have the people with more experience get it first okay i'm fine i'm fine with that, that that gives you a, a smaller set yep i'm fine so in the first time i would add alex and like in the new yep so maybe formalizing contributor would be uh, nice but yeah we can uh, definitely do it after we have some clarity with asia sponsorship Okay, and then we can also, and then I will also plan a session so where we can, I can give you a quick overview of the different components and where to look at for the different information on the Azure account. So, okay. Otherwise, some updates as well, sorry. Um, otherwise, some updates on the plugin site. Uh, Gavin Morgan has been working um, on the plugin site to split the API and uh, the front end into different two different Docker images. You also work on the um, UI, so now um, it should be it will be easier to, to use to access a plugin site uh, from a mobile phone. Um, we are still discussing about do we want to deploy the plugin site on Azure or do we use the um, uh, Netlify to deploy the plugin API? So. Um, Unless, unless you have some an opinion here, I think we will we'll just stick to the to the mailing list discussion. Yeah, for me, the main uh, question is when we do the migration, because yeah, there is non-zero risk that uh, things start falling apart after this migration, and it boils down uh, to capacity of the infra team. Yeah, 
is there's not a compelling reason for us to have to do that migration in January, is there, Oleg? Whereas we've got compelling things, we've got to get ACS to AKS transition done in January. Exactly. So which migration are you talking about? Because the plugin site is already running on the new cluster, so um, the plugin site is already safe anyway. Yeah, for me, yeah. it's uh, just a concern in terms of capacity. So yeah, we still need to click on the button. Yeah, even uh, we run uh, it as is on Jenkins infrastructure, on Azure, fine. Uh, you, uh, but still it may require maintenance effort because plugin site APIs are consumed from, by other services. So if it goes down, uh, we may experience some issues. Uh, I'm happy to do it now if you have capacity uh, just to get it shipped. Or Actually, could, uh, yeah. I, I'm worried about doing it now, even if we think we have capacity. We, I th feel like we are, we are light on capacity no matter what. And Olivier, any surprises either in ci.jenkins.io or elsewhere may consume a bunch of your time. Uh, I'd rather delay plugins transition if we possibly can. Well, what we could do, we could uh, just uh, set up a separate service because plugin site is quite uh, self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. So we can uh, deploy the new version in parallel with the existing one on new URL and then yeah. uh, get rid of that. Uh, well, I believe it's just uh, one patch to Helm charts because everything is more or less in place. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it would be a safe change. Uh, I'm not sure that plugin site costs us too much money to worry about the service. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, if you want to deploy it, it would be my suggestion. Thank you. Okay. So, from my point of view, we covered different points that I wanted to discuss. So, I don't know if you have anything mm -hmm. specific that you want to discuss. Then we don't have to. I'll keep on the meeting for 30 minutes after that. Okay. Yeah. So thanks all. Yep. So I guess we can stop here. Thanks. Thanks for your time and uh, see you on ours anyway. All right. Thanks.